y'all. It's our one with You Never Know. And tonight I'm doing free readings. I see that somebody wants to have their aura read. Your aura is blue and white and red. You're a patriot. You're welcome. Um, yeah, not an aura reader. But I hope that you will stay around and we can do some tarot readings. As always, I want to start off with the weekly tarot scopes by Tarot by Arwen. Me. Um, we're having a little bit of a storm here in Austin, so I'm still kind of drying out. The tarot scopes for the month for the week of April 6th from yesterday to April 12th, that's the Saturday, are as follows. Aquarius, you get the Queen of Swords. Powerful messages come when you rule your mind. Make sure you see facts and not emotions. Mental tasks need attention. Pisces, King of Cups, avant-garde, heart-led life, secrets of the universe to share. Be your own weird fish. Swim where you are led. Enjoy. Aries, you get the Seven of Cups. What do you dream of? What do you wake to? It's okay to have both. Make a dream come true this week. It's worth it. Taurus, the Empress. Your creative side needs time. I want you to indulge in making what makes you happy. Let your stuff be most important this week. Gemini, you get the Three of Swords. Careful you don't betray someone's heart. You need to navigate this mental tangle very carefully. Treachery comes back. Cancer, fool. I mean, you get the fool. Stick your thumb out. Catch a ride to someplace else. Yearning to change scenes could be solved by painting a wall. It's a little easier. Leo, Ace of Cups. Open up to romantic possibilities. You need to hold your cup out if you want it filled. Keeping it on the shelf? Not so much, baby. Virgo, you get the Six of Coins. Giving without feeling sucks you dry. Volunteering for the right reason enriches you. Balancing, that fixes things. Libra, you get the five of coins. Asking for help is not weak. Holding on to just enough for you is not selfish. Watch your mindset, please. Negativity kills. Scorpio, the star. Let yourself shine. Set your goals higher because you've got it this week. Others see you for the treasure you are. Glow! Sagittarius, you get the Eight of Cups. It's in the past, leave it there. Move towards light and love this week. Stop holding on to all that old crap. Capricorn, you get the Magician. What will you make happen this week? Hang in there because you've got everything you need to create. You just have to get it started. So, as I promised, I'm going to be doing tarot readings for the audience today. Um, and remember, if you showed up and brought one of your friends with you who's in the chat room, you need to let me know because there will be a drawing. But you have to have a friend who showed up because you invited them. I knew there was a catch. So, I'm going to flip over here and look at people in the chat room. Let's see. Let's see. Kim can see. Uh, Aura, so she's talking to somebody about their aura. She says there are sparkles and ribbons. Gold's actually very, very good. Uh, gold in an aura is, from what I understand, uh, a higher connection. It's a, a spiritual part of the aura. <laughs> he thinks maybe he's going to be rich. Couldn't hurt. So I'm reading today with the Vanessa Tarot. I wanted to show you a little bit of this deck because it's truly one of those decks that some people overlook. They don't, I don't know, they don't give it enough credence, if you will. And it's a super little deck. Um, it's very female oriented. The um, Leonard Francisco, I think is his name, is the one who did it. And just look at this Queen of Coins. Look at her expression. That great little curl coming down. It's kind of a manja, or is it manja or manja? I don't know. But it's kind of that art style, anime art style, but it's not really anime. 
Um, this deck came out in 2006. And there's just so much to love about it. Strength, she's on safari, and she's perched on a lion. Uh, looking, looking, looking. Uh, the Nine of Swords, that old anxiety nightmare card. Look on her head. She's got a sleeping mask on. Okay? Fairly traditional interpretations of the tarot. But um, the pictures are very, very different. Some people actually see famous people in them. I'm looking for one in here in particular to see if I can find it. La, la, la. And if anybody wants to call in who'd like a reading, um, let us know in the chat room that you're going to call in so we can get ready for you. Oh, this is, this is the famous one. Um, can anybody tell me who this is? Wait, I can't get there. Ah. Is that Arwen? No. Think about a politician. And imagine she can see Russia from her backyard. Oh, Sarah Palin? Yeah, it came out before Sarah, Sarah Palin ever got popular, so we're pretty sure it's not was not meant to be her. But some of the pictures definitely are people we know. I'm looking for the magician right now because that's a that's a dead gimme gimme on the magician. Uh where's the magician? Magician's not gonna show up really easily. Um, but here's the Five of Cups, which can be um, loss of community and loss of friendship. Recognize those two girls? Snow White and probably Aurora, Sleeping Beauty. Um, and I'm looking because I go, oh, doggone it. No, it's the sisters from Frozen. Say it again. It's the sisters from the new movie Frozen. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where is she? Who hid my magician? Eric. Dang it. Um, I believe this one is supposed to be Julia Roberts. With the awards and all that. And all that. And this one's an easy one if, if you're uh, in my age. Hope you wish. Yeah, a little. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, that's Jeannie. Never mind. Here's the magician. Okay. The first person in the chat room who can tell me this is. Uh-uh, wrong. I thought so at first, but you have to, let me back it up. Maybe you need more of her. That friend dresser is a nanny? No. Look at the shirt. Is it close enough? I can't see. Nobody, nobody, nobody told me there was going to be a quiz. <sighs> it's Sophia Loren, people. Uh, she was Her right hair's there. too long. No, not for early, Sophia. And she was. <laughs> so, um, we do have a question in the, in the chat room. How is this upcoming weekend going to go? And that is from Kim Pen. Makes me want to call you Pen Kim. Then I'm going to call you a penguin. And that's answered. going to be your name. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to write a children's story about the Yeti and the penguin. Hey, I want credits in a free book. Okay, so we're getting these up.
Nine of Cups, Heart's Desire. Make a wish, have something come true. Um, that's what that card is right there. I don't know if you can see her very well. But this is the genie card in most decks. It's the card I associate with a genie. Rub on something and you get a wish. The key here is that this weekend, while it can be a dream come true, make sure you have more than one dream. Make sure that you're open to different dreams coming true, if that makes sense to you. Don't don't pre-write the weekend. Leave it open for some push and pull. Yeah, and it's not a bad, on either side we get the Seven of Wands, which is Super Amazon Chick. Depending position, holding ground, maybe having to take the higher ground, because on the other side we have Temperance. And Temperance is a bartender, which is, I actually I've seen Temperance as a bartender in another deck before, and so an interesting uh, interpretation of Temperance, because since Temperance is about moderation and balance and making sure you're even and equal. So you may be hit, and what I'm feeling like is that you're going to get hit with somebody who's going to come up and say, I remember you. You said you were going to do X, Y, and Z. What the hell? And you may have to step back, and instead of going into the, <laughs> that you may want to back it up, get calm with yourself, and say, you know, that was a good dream. This is a different one. But I, I think you're going to have a good weekend. So, um, look and see, are you looking for monetary success here? Well, we're going to a conference, and not only do we have a vendor's booth, but we're also speakers. Mmm. Well, the Knight of Wands and Strength show up. So, you're going to have to take some risks in your speaking. You're going to have to kind of jump out of a perfectly good plane. Um, but strength is fortitude and strength is will. It's uh, a card that speaks to how focused will you be. So you may want to um, pre-write some of your speak, speak, some of your speak, some of your speech. But Definitely what you need to do is get passionate about it because that's what the night wants. The night is a passionate person and they do things with passion and because they have a passion for it. They don't do it because somebody else said it was the right thing to do. Somebody else said, hey, you can make a lot of bucks at this. They do it because there's a drive to do it. So you may want to impart that as part of your speech if you aren't already. Penguins, can, penguins can't write. Hold it in your bill. And don't make me tell you my, my naughty penguin joke. Um, it would make title blush. Ooh, baby. <laughs> So do we have anybody who wants to call in and ask a question? <coughs> Don't be shy. I called, kind of. And now we're just going to stare at one another. Okay. Well, let's do a reading on something... A news event that's happened that you want to know about. Not the Malaysia thing. Um, I have an idea. Okay. And I because and I don't actually know which character it was, but I know how I met your mother just ended. After a fairly what twelve year run, ten year run, something like that? Yeah, it had a while, yeah. Um I was wondering the, 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 maybe do a reading of the character for uh, the father, the one that was a narrator for the whole thing. 
Okay, I've actually never seen the show. Neil Patrick Harris. Oh, I love him. Okay, so what would the reading be on? Well, they, that was the thing. That they, you never knew who the narrator was. It was, his, it was Neil Patrick Harris's voice, though. No, it was the other character's voice. One of the other characters' voice was the one Neil Patrick Harris. Mm-hmm. He just played the suave playboy, which is totally opposite of what he is in real life. But he played. He's the one that played the player. The guy that did the narrating was the, the, the kind of long hair guy, the single guy that was not part of the couple. So what would we, but I don't know what we would be reading about. I, I don't know either. I, I just, it, was, it would come to the end of the run and I thought maybe we could do a reading for the father to see what's, what's in the future for them. Because they basically spent the last 10 years explaining how they met it's, it's them explaining to their children how they met your mother. So it, it, the whole thing's been a like Star Wars. They did Episode Six before they did Two and Three or whatever. Did they? So you never know who the until this last episode that aired last week. Nobody knew who the actual who the actual people. The guy that was narrating the the, the shot was one of the characters, but you never knew who. Who was the married couple and who whose kids and who was explaining it? You never knew exactly. You never knew if it was the married couple, the couple that dated, or Neil Patrick Harris talking to his future kids from one of his flings, I guess. And people watched that for ten years. Well, they watched Seinfeld, and it was always about nothing. And I never Seinfeld either. I, I had to have somebody no soup for you. Somebody had to explain that to me. Okay, so maybe it wants that you. Okay, that. can you read someone's final card? What do you mean, Mickey Rooney? Aww. I don't. I don't know. Okay, y'all. Y'all are really stumping me tonight because I don't know. Why would we read? Mickey Rooney died. Well, if they if they come back. Yeah, but Could, couldn't you pull a reading to see whether or not that this was his last life? No, I really that, and here's why. That's a, that's a good ethics question for me because he's not asking me. True. So, like, I won't read like when and Anna Nicole Smith died. A lot of readers wanted to read about that. I won't do that. Um, people like, or when Whitney Houston, when she died, oh, lots of, would, lots of readers had to read about that. People would not let her lay down. Right? I mean, if she was trying to cross over, she was like, bitch, please. Right? <laughs> I need to go. Mickey's um, already gone. I know where he's at. I'm, that man brought me so many hours of joy Starting from with so Shirley many movies. Temple. Hmm? He did movies back with Shirley Temple when she was 12. Hey, kids, I know. Let's put on a show. One of my favorite Mickey Rooney movies. And it's a, a Shirley Temple and Mickey Rooney. Um, and he was with her when she did the Gibson Girl one. Yep. Or no, that, was that Shirley Temple or was that Anne? That was Anne. That may have been Anne Russell. Yeah. So, and I just... Gosh... The past couple of weeks I've been watching, I, they did a run of Shirley Temple movies when she died. So I did a whole, I taped a bunch of them and watched them because I loved Shirley Temple movies and still do to this day. And they are sexist, they are racist, they are absolutely products of their time and would never fly in today's world. And she absolutely hated every last one of them and refused to watch them when she died of age. That's what I heard. I heard she really, um, that she, she felt she was mistreated and, and was mistreated from what she said. Um, and it's hard for me to know that because I still want to watch the movies and enjoy them. The Little Princess was a favorite book of mine. I just saw that the other day. Yeah. There, she, she had one movie 
and I don't know what the name of it is. I only saw it once, and I haven't found it since. Tell me what it's about. It started out with her and a little boy sitting on clouds. There were angels waiting to be born. And that is all I can remember about it because it's been probably 30, 40 years since I've seen it. Was it a white boy or a black boy? A white boy. Okay. And it probably wasn't a little colonel. I'll have to look into it and find it because I think I've seen every Shirley Temple movie. Even in her, her bad teen ones. Um, yeah. For some reason I want to say it's um, Johnny What's-His-Face. He played... Jody on Family Affair? Yeah, Johnny yeah. Weiss. Johnny something. The redhead. Yeah, but I think he's way younger. I, I that's why I, I the boy reminded me of him. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Cause his baby take a bow. No, this, this one I've only seen once, and I haven't been able to find it again. It was on Saturday afternoon when they were, because in St. Louis they would do a full run on Charlie Chan, a full run on Abbott and Costello, a full run on Shirley Temple. Saturday afternoon. Oh. And this movie showed up once. Huh. And I've never seen it again. I'm looking now, because i got to find it now. You know that, right? You know I am now on a hunt. To find this. Does anybody in the chat room know? I think Tim's in there and it looks like someone else is in there. Ruth's in there. Let's see. There's the Bluebird. Uh, Bluebird Curly Top Heidi. Bright Eyes is one of my personal loves. I really enjoy that because that's where you get the good ship um, lollipop from. Right. <sighs> Let's see. And I like Shirley Temples. Does anybody know what the drink at the Shirley Temple is? No. It was Coke and grenadine syrup. Oh, yeah. You'd think they'd give her something better than that. <laughs> well, it's because it had no alcohol. Right, but basically yeah. it's a cherry Coke. Okay, I'm looking here, going all the way back. This was when she was real young, when she was little, little, when she first started out. Well, the little this one is the red-haired alibi. I mean, that's the youngest. She's 1932, 1933. She still had, she still had the baby fat on her leg. And Delmar Watson, but I'm not finding him. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to. I will have to dig into that and find that one out. Okay. And now we know why the show is. You never know. <laughs> you just never know. Now we're going to read. <laughs> well, hey, let's ask the tarot if it knows what the name of the movie is. If it can give us some hints. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to draw three cards, left to right, and we're just going to use those to see if it'll give us any tense. This is the Shirley Temple movie where she's sitting on a cloud with another little boy before they're born. Stranger things have been read about. Hey, if it finds that movie. <laughs> the Hermit. The nightmare card and the card of leaving baggage behind. Well, and it's a nine, nine, and an eight, too. But the hermit shows kind of a Cleopatra with the star in it. The nine is the nightmare card and the anxiety and the, the woe is me. So it could have been one of her orphan movies, but that was pretty much, Shirley Temple made, um, they, they made a lot of money off her as the little orphan child, and then rich families would fight over her, and the heart work 
working, you know, a couple would always win. And then the Eight of Cups. So that doesn't really do anything, does it? Let's, let's just see. Let's go out there on a limb. Well, the anxiety card makes sense because that's what they were discussing in the beginning of the movie is how scared they were to, because they didn't know who they were going to. They were nervous about being born. Hmm. I'm looking at this. And then the Eight of Cups is like packing bags and going away. That's a totally different direction than my three cards went. What did you get? All three are reversed. And I got the Nine of, the nine of Wands then the Page of Swords, and then the Ten of Wands. So it's, at least with the, the, the Ten of Wands, it's almost like I'm packing my bags and I'm doing him. So maybe that has to do with the title. Yeah, and I got that in the Eight of Cups because she's got bags packed and she's taking a journey. So what we need, what we need, people, is, and Shirley Temple Cloud only brings up heaven. Let's try how I keep coming up with the bluebird. She's too old ah, on that the, one. Try the bluebird because it talks about the heaven scene with the unborn children. That's it. So. Her brother title is Johnny Russell. I told you there was a Johnny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I believe that, um, I think that's it. I'm trying to see. She was not a good girl in this movie, and it was actually a flop. And that's one of the reasons it doesn't, um, it's not come out more. Because her such a brat. The opening scenes are in black and white, yes. and then it moves into color. Yes. The bluebird. But now how could that be? Okay, so the bluebird, let's look. The hermit, well, she's a bratty daughter of a woodcutter, finds a unique bird, refuses to give it to a sick friend, visited by a fairy, and she has to go look for the bird their dog, their cat, and their lantern get turned into humans. And she becomes a kind of gentler, and there's a, a nightmare or a dream sequence. And then the Eight of Cups, she turns into a better person and the child's father comes home from war. So maybe, are we stretching it, y'all? What do you think? I don't think so. Well, that was kind of fun. Some Google help. Yeah, but without the cards, you wouldn't have. And that's something that cards will do that kind of spark your, because you, you were like, yeah, the, 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 you know, the nightmare thing, the, the bag packing. You had some extra for us, so I think that's really interesting. Um, anybody else have something they want us to hunt down using terror? We'll be the tarot hide and seekers today. No? Well, and Johnny, and Johnny Russell only was enacting for three years. Wow. From 37 to 40. That's interesting. 
Jane? I wonder if he changed what happened. I don't know, because the Bluebird was fourth from his last movie. He only did three more movies after that. Well, now, IMDb has him with 13 credits, but a lot of them, he's just, he's uncredited. Like he was in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Yes. And Jesse James. Yeah. The Duke Comes Back. I think I've actually seen that one. No, it's a boxing movie. I wouldn't have seen it. How interesting, though. Just how very interesting. Um, and I love to look at old actors and see where they are now uh it's very cool to watch the um the little princess if you watch the little princess no not the little princess um bright eyes in bright eyes there's an incredibly rotten child that incredibly rotten child grew up to t become a very famous commercial actress named madge the plumber Yeah, I think it was a commercial. She might have been. It might have. Been, oh no, no, no! Madge the Plumber was. Um, she was on. Yeah, Comet. She was Madge the Plumber. So. When the little. She, when go the, ahead. When the little copper tone baby didn't she end up being the? That's Jodie Foster. Yeah. No way! Really? Yeah. I don't think I knew that. Johnny Russell was born in 33 and did his last show in 40. He went on to do something else. I bet he just said, y'all leave me the heck alone. He disappeared. Because they, they, don't, they have a date for a uh, birth date, but not a uh, death date. Very cool. Okay, y'all. What's next? Who's in the in the chat room? I see Ruth. Ruth, do you have a question? Oh, Ruth, I owe you a question, don't I? You want me to do your reading for you right here and now, right now, instead of an email? I completely forgot. Let's see what she says. You're grounded. I know. She's good. She'll poke me a little while and later go, um, you said you were going to do that reading. She said, go seen for it. it. Let's go for it. Ruth asked me about kickstarting a piece of her life. Um, Ruth, tell me how, how much I can say about your question. And I stare at the screen. It's like watching a pot boil. It never goes any faster. Go for it. So Ruth is a writer, and like many writers, she's hit kind of a struggle spot, and she wants to know how to rekindle, restart, excuse me, revamp her life. Um, I had a jumper. So she wants to know how to revamp her and restart the, the writing career that she's been working on. It's a fiction writing. So let's go ahead and get these cards going. Ruth, I want you to give me a number between 1 and 10. And we're going to start the reading from that spot. And go. I always get numbers stuck in my head, too, when I do that. Seven, it's the number I had in my head. I should have told somebody so y'all believe me. <laughs> First card, Ruth. The Tower. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to be blunt. Y'all know me. This is the tower. Girl diving out of the top. The tower is representative of something that's coming down. Something big and bold. Boom. It's, it's gone up in smoke. Ruth, you're going to have to ask yourself, what lies have you been believing about your writing? What lies... Have you been buying into? Because the tower is built on lies we tell ourselves and lies we believe 
from others. And I'm using the word lie very, very deliberately because a lie can be, I'm not a very good writer. I shouldn't write. If I write it, somebody else has already thought it up. I had a great story, but Nora Roberts wrote it. So we'd want to ask you, are you building a tower of that kind of negativity, that kind of self-limiting thought? Are you preventing yourself from writing? Because you're believing everything we read. And as writers, we read it all. We read um, one of the best, worst things I ever heard was somebody came out and said, <laughs> a million people in this world want to write a book. 500,000 of those will actually start. 250,000 of those might get the first chapter done. And then they kept going down and down and down and down and down and down until they were like to, 100 people will finish their book. 50 of them will submit it. 10 will get requested. One will get an offer. I think the speaker wanted to make us feel really great because we'd gone to a conference and we were part of the people who were out there finishing the books. But for me, it was like, well, fuck me running. One? Really? Um, so, Ruth, ask yourself, are you limiting yourself? Are you believing the hype about how hard it is to write and how hard it is to get published? It's easy to write. You just sit down and stare at the paper till blood forms on you. I can't remember who said that. Um, but watch the language you use with Ruth about Ruth's writing career and revamp that. Now we're going to look at two other cards because it was a three card reading I offered her. We're going to look at the help side and the hinder side. Now I've got two cards in my hand, Ruth. Left and right. Which one is the helper card to you? The left card or the right card? Poor Ruth is like, I didn't know I had to participate. The right card. Is that the helper card? That's the one I thought too. Look at that. The four of swords. In a comfy chair, by a fire. She's got her eyes closed. She's taking time for herself, Ruth. She's indulging in her need to rest and relax and to get quiet. Life's been a little busy, I'm thinking, and you haven't been able to carve out writing time. You haven't, well, let's make that different. You haven't made writing a priority. And you haven't set your foot down and said, this 30 minutes, I'm going to write. And y'all, an aside, you would be so surprised how much writing you can get done if you set a timer and say, I'm going to write for 30 minutes. No research, no fact checking, no email checking, no Facebook liking. Just write for 30 minutes. Try it and see. They're called writing sprints. And I know some writers who will get together with other writers to do that. You know, they'll all say, okay, at 10 o'clock, we're starting. Boom. And they're off. Let's look at the hender side. The hender side, the high priestess. Secrets, mystery, magic, the arcane. You know what your hender is, Ruth? You think there's a secret. You think there's a magic formula. And you're not paying attention to your own gut. Go back to the book that you left. Go back to the one that's what? half three quarters finished that you loved it made you laugh in all the right places it made your heart tug go back to that book i don't know what that book is but finish that book feels like the one of the care maybe the is the heroin plump is that what it is i don't i don't know what it is but it's something about that book that you thought wasn't marketable now eric did you pull some cards too well, of course. What um, did you? 
mine, yep. <clears throat> mine are a little different. It, it, it's very similar but different. Um, first card I pulled, and if, if, if I thought about it, I'd turn my camera on, but I pulled, I'm using the Rider Waite. The first card I pulled was the Ace of Cups, reversed, which can throw the whole meaning of that card upside down, literally, um, because the symbolism is a cup, a hand coming out of a cloud holding a chalice with a, a dove holding a sacrament going into the cup which is overflowing. Um, I, I kind of took that to mean I would tend to agree with you. There's something that she's, something is moving her own ideas out of her head. That's the symbolism I'm going to take from that card that, that there's something going on that is moving ideas out that she doesn't necessarily need to be moving out. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether it's old spirituality or like you mentioned, old voices and how she needs to address her own vocabulary. Now the second card I pulled was in, in, in upright and it was the five of swords which shows somebody, two, two people have their backs to one other person and the person that has that is facing the the card looking at the two people with their backs turned is grinning and I've always thought that this card kind of symbolized uh, a, a person that has achieved something they've won something they've uh, reached a landmark because the other two people obviously haven't reached them and you have all the swords for everybody that could be in the picture so obviously something's gone on in her life that has allowed her to reach a milestone which would also gather why she would ask the question that she asked. She, she's at a crossroads, so she's evidently she's started from point A, made it to B, but doesn't know which way to go on the split to go to C or D. And the last card I got is the dreaded, the almost diabolical Nine of Swords, but it was reversed. That's good. Which means, which means that she should... She's not going to have to worry about what's going to happen with her writing in the future. It's going to happen. It's just going to take some trials and tribulations, but she knows that. Um, I would take all of this in, 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 in one easy, short answer to a very long explanation. Um, I would say, yes, kickstart it. Yes, go for it. Um, and never give up. And I would lend an extra thing. The Ace of Cups reversed. Ace of Cups up is your emotional joy, your, it's what fills you up. So she's not getting joy right now when she writes and she needs to turn that up. Right. I and then you got that. two swords, right? And I got a sword. Yes. Swords are all mental stuff. They're all, um, they're associated with the writing. So it's interesting that so many swords came up. Now Ruth said the sprint is one of the only ways she can get through nano. When she says nano, y'all, she's talking about nano rhymo. National Novel Writing Month. Um, and I used to teach, a, I think Ruth took this course, I used to teach a Tarot for Writers course that started November 1st and ended on the last day of November, which I can't remember if it's the 30th or 31st right now. Um, and it was lessons and we worked our way through the hero's journey. If you want to write a fiction book, I have an online course. If you want to take it, jump on it. You just go to bit.ly slash 33 write. That's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash 33 capital W and then little R-I-T-E. And I've had people take it. They've really enjoyed it. Um, and one of the nice things is once you've got the lessons, you can take it over and over and over again. You don't have to come back and take another class with me. It's just done. And I really believe in the power of writing and tarot. So Ruth, do you have a tarot deck that you use? I can't even tell if she's typing. <laughs> is it a slight delay about 15 seconds and go um <laughs> a couple mostly the Gaian the Gaian is um, as y'all know if you haven't 
paid attention, I mean, it's my favorite. I've got the limited edition right here. And it's, um, well, you'll see when you compare the, the two, just how different tarot decks can be. And the images on the Gaian are so gorgeous. Is that the tree? Oh, that's the hermit. Um, let's see what we get there. I can't see in the reflection. Oh, it's it's Joanna's little granddaughter, who's much older now. Well, not much older. She's a couple years older. Um, but if you aren't using tarot for writing, do. And you might want to get a deck that's more in line with what you write. You know, if you write Sassy Chicklet, the Vanessa, um, if you're writing more spiritual, maybe the guy in would be good. If you're writing stuff that's like steampunk and avant-garde, you might want to look at something like the Deviant Moon. There's a borderless edition now that's very pretty. I wish I had it handy, but I don't. It's in the other room. Um, looking over here to see what else I have. But, yeah, so there's lots of different decks, and I use decks I'm not truly familiar with when I want to really break out of my head and really get somewhere new with my writing. Because sometimes you fall into the same old, same old. So she's doing two. One's traditional fantasy and one is erotic romance. For erotic romance, have you ever heard of the Menara Tarot or the Black Tarot? They are both erotic decks. Um, and they're naughty. So... Those might be for, for the erotic moment. And the fantasy one, look for Lunea Weatherstone's Victorian Fairy Tarot. Um, it's, it's gorgeous. The, the, the artwork that Gary... Oh, gosh, Gary, I'm so sorry. Lippincourt or Lippincott, I believe is his last name. But it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. Soft, romantic watercolors. Um, just beautiful. And Kim suggests the Celestial deck. Now, the Celestial deck is unusual because the images it uses are from the Southern Hemisphere. It's actually a very astrologically inclined deck. Um, and constellations and ast astronomical. But it's, um, it's using stuff from the Southern Hemisphere. So there's going to be some imagery in there that people aren't going to understand. And it might be a really good deck for that because sometimes when you're writing, you don't want to do traditional meanings of tarot. For instance, I'm going to, I'm going to do a demonstration, y'all. I'm going to pull cards from three different decks. I've only got a little bit of time here, so I'm going to do it really fast. I'm going to pull one from the Dark Goddess, one from the Vanessa, and one from the Gaian. Wow. Okay. So we get the moon. See how beautiful that is? Arian Hod and her silver shining wheel. We, then we go from the moon, which is illusion and feminine intuition and not quite seeing, but knowing. And we go to the empress, who is in charge of all of her garden and all of her creativity. And then we get the Ace of Air. Now, the reason I use three different decks is because I don't want to have traditional meaning stuck in my head. So I'm going to look here and say, just looking at it, I see like a woman dragging something up a hill. She doesn't look happy to me. And then I see this woman in the garden and she's very sultry. She's Got one eye, Veronica Lake, covered. And she seems, in this, she seems a little adversarial. So I think she's holding the, the woman carrying the stuff up. I think she's holding her down. And then I get the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. So I instantly think it's a Cinderella or an Ugly Duckling kind of theme. And that's, that's where I would run with that. Oh, Ruth said, thank you both. Lots of truth in what you say. I have gotten bogged down in the mental stuff. Well, Ruth, snap out of it. 
Don't you hate it when people say that? Um, but this is definitely about you diving in and not listening to those, those stinking cans and can'ts, shoulds and shouldn'ts. Who cares, right? Poop on them. Um, and that's kind of what I want y'all to think about is just you don't have to lock yourself in when you're writing. Tarot for writers is not traditional tarot. You're using it as leaping points, as ways of seeing things differently. So don't lock yourself into meanings when you're writing and using tarot as a tool. And that's something I really stress in my class. I, I just, uh, you might say harp on it. So, and Kim says, it's your story, write it the way you want, just write it. Very good words. Um, a very, very good writing teacher by the name of April Williamson write, uh, teaches a story, uh, teaches a workshop called Write a Book in a Week. And it's W A B I W. So we have, we have to say that three times, slow or fast. But one of the things she says in this hour to hour workshop that she gives is you must write crap. You must give yourself permission to write crap. Because the first draft is just that, it's a first draft. Nobody has you locked into what it should or shouldn't mean. So write. Nobody says you have to write the ending last. If you know what the ending is, write it now. Stick it at the end of your document and write towards it. You don't know what's happening in the next scene? Jump to the scene after it and write backwards. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Now I have um, just a little bit of time left, so I'm going to do some self-promotion. My monthly Terascopes, uh, I do a podcast once a month. They were just out on April 2nd. You can find them at podbean.com slash tarot by Arwen. And that's pod, like a pea pod, and bean, like a bean bowl, dot com. Uh, I hope that you'll take a gander and listen to them. They're about, I was trying to tell Eric earlier how long they were, and I think they're either 20, they'll say 25 minutes. I don't think they're much longer than that, but it's under half an hour. It's a free service, and if you're up for it, do it. And if you want, I'm doing I 10 slots this month. I'm opening up for 10 email readings for $25 for a three-card reading. So the reading that I just did for Ruth, that's the type of reading I'm doing in this three card. They're email only. And if you want one, email me at readings at tarotbyarwin.com. And if I have any left, I'll definitely put you down for one. And this has been a great show. I'm actually gonna end it just a little short. Uh, I apologize, I have to work my day job tonight. So, I know, day job, nighttime, who knew? But I really want y'all to remember that my heart's desire is to help you seek joy and find it. So I hope that you'll go through your day and look for the joy and just hold on to it. And as always, y'all, seek joy. <laughs>